Hello, hello. My name is Aga, and I've been teaching English as a second language to babies and toddlers mostly here in France for over 16 years. Welcome to my studio. <laughs> This is my car. This is where I spend many hours every day when I drive from one preschool to another. And I know that there are many educators and ESL teachers here. And just to thank you for being here and supporting me, I've decided to share with you as many teaching tips and teaching ideas as possible. So for the past few months, I've been recording here in my car, short 90 second long videos where I show you uh, the props I make and use with my baby students, the songs we sing, the books we read, and I'm a bookworm, my puppets, and many other teaching tips. So stay tuned, because I'm going to drop a new video every week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And I hope those short videos will help you in your teaching adventure. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hello and welcome to my teaching tips video series. Today I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my job and it all started over 17 years ago in Poland where I was a preschool English teacher and then in 2008 I moved to France and it was a very difficult experience because I really struggled to find a job. People were not interested in English workshops for young children at all But little by little, step by step, I surrounded myself with positive people. I found people who believed in me, who inspired me, who let me do what I love, who let me spread my wings. And so here I am, 16, 17 years later, um, doing an amazing job that I'm really proud of, the job that I created. And I think I am the only person here in France or maybe even in Europe, or maybe in the, even in the whole white world, doing a job that I do. So I'm very proud of it. And if there is a piece of advice I could give you, it would be be creative, test, try new things, and you will see that sooner or later, you will find what you are good at and just stick to that and you will see you will be happier than ever. I believe in you. I wish you good luck and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hello, and let me show you how to prepare interactive, fun and cheap workshops for very young learners. I mostly teach really young children, like from zero to three. And I really like when my workshops are interactive, which means when I can share my props with my baby students. And I don't buy expensive or fragile props anymore. What I've decided to do instead is that uh, whenever I cannot use the real objects, those are always the best choice, I print out pictures of real objects and then laminate them so they last for longer. And here is an example. These are the toothbrushes and hairbrushes that we've been using this week. As you can see, they are easy to make, easy to clean, easy to store and very cheap. And I've been doing the same with snowflakes, animals, teddy bears, and many other props. I hope it was useful. Talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye. One little duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but none of the five little ducks came back. 
outside. Mother duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. And all of the five little ducks came back. Five little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 quack. And all of the five little ducks came back. This is the song that I sing with my baby students when we learn farm animals and when we learn to count to five. I know it looks like a book, but it's not. It's basically two sheets of paper and some corrugated plastic stuck together. And then I decorated the scene. For the mummy duck, I used some Velcro so that I can move her around. And for the baby ducklings, blue tack. I hope it was useful. See you soon. Quack, quack. Bye. Under the sea. Stripey fish and her friends are playing hide and seek. Who's behind the shipwreck? Let's take a peek. P, can, boo! It's a dolphin! Diving dolphin! Say hello to Aga's favorite stories for babies and toddlers. The pop up P, can, Boo series by DK. I just love those books so much that I bought the whole collection. And all of my baby students know how to play peekaboo. And it's such a pleasure to read those books and to see my baby students read along. Of course, they all impatiently wait to find out who is hiding behind the flap. And what I really like about those books is the pictures, the colours, the element of surprise and suspense and the rhymes. Oh, Aga loves rhymes. And we read the story Papa Peekaboo Under the Sea when we learn about sea creatures and sea animals. And then we sing the little fish song that you can find on my YouTube channel. Talk to you soon. Bye. Meet Barry, the fish with fingers. His favorite game is tickle, tickle, cheese. Do you want to play two? Five, four, three, two, one. Here we come. Who is hiding in the seaweed? Hmm. Oh, look. One orange octopus coming to get you. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> this is one of my puppet books. And I've got quite a few. I've got Barry, the fish with fingers, Winnie the Pooh, who sings If You're Happy and You Know It, Peppa Pig, Peter Rabbit, You're Not So Scary Sid, Calm Down Boris, Naughty Nancy, and probably some more. And I really like puppet books because they are so interactive. It's not an ordinary story, you see. Your book comes to life and you can tickle the children, you can high five the children, you can sing with the children. I use this story, Barry, the fish with fingers, when we learn um, sea animals and when we learn to count to five. I hope it was useful. Have fun with your puppet bugs. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi everyone and welcome to my teaching tips video series. 
Today I wanted to share with you a very important tip. Whenever I go to a preschool or a nursery, I always leave this kind of paper. It's an A4 sheet of paper with um, a lesson plan, if you like. And I leave it for the parents that I never get a chance to see. I always start with what's on the menu this week and it's colors this week. And then I write more details like the titles of the songs that we sing and the titles of the books that we read during our English workshops. And I always add some pictures so that it's easier for the parents to find the song or the book on the internet. And I always, very important detail, I always add the name of the author if the book or the song is not mine. I think it's a very, very important thing to do because there are many parents who would like to teach their children English at home. They just don't know how. So I give them some tips, some ideas, and if they need more information, they can always send me a message. And imagine that the little ones can learn English with me at preschool or nursery and at home with their parents. Isn't that great? I hope it was useful. Talk to you soon for more teaching tips.